Welcome back to Silicon Insights. Our coverage of the Core Ultra 200 series continues, and today we've got a review of the Core Ultra 5 245K for you all. The successor to the Core i5 14600K, this is Intel's new mid-range champion and the alternative to AMD's Ryzen 7 9700X. Compared side by side, the 245K and the 14900K seem pretty similar. Both CPUs have the same core count and L3 cache size, which are two pretty important components of a processor. Even where the chips differ, they don't differ by much. The 14600K has six more threads since it has hyperthreading on its 6P cores. Intel has moved away from hyperthreading with its latest CPU architecture, so there's no hyperthreading on the 245K. The 14600K's P cores also have a higher boost clock speed by 100 MHz, but the 245K's E cores go up to 4.6 GHz instead of 4 GHz. The 245K also has 6 MB more L2 cache, 1 MB extra for each P core. And finally, the 245K's maximum TDP is a little lower at 159 watts. For a deeper analysis into the Arrow Lake architecture that powers the 245K, we have a video that you can check out. A link should be in the upper right corner. The 245K's similarity to the 14600K might raise some concerns, since that means all performance gains will have to come from architectural improvements, which can't really be quantified on a spec sheet. Now, we've seen plenty of instances of architectural improvements being responsible for big performance gains. For example, Ryzen 5000, powered by the Zen 3 architecture in 2020, made some pretty large gains over Zen 2-based Ryzen 3000 CPUs, and that was despite these CPUs having pretty much the same core count, frequency, and cache sizes. Intel did make some pretty substantial claims about the improvements that Arrow Lake brings, but that won't seal the deal for a mid-range CPU. Pricing is also going to be really important, because the mid-range is crowded with options for both Intel and AMD right now. At $309, the 245K has lots of competitors. Its most immediate rival is the Ryzen 7 9700X. It has less cores, but plenty of cache and a very attractive 65 watt TDP. Users can also increase this TDP to 105 watts if they want more performance. There's also last generation models that the 245K has to compete with. The Core i7-14700K is a little bit more expensive, but has more cores and also a higher clock speed. And then there's also the 14600K, which is about $100 cheaper. 14th gen CPUs in general have gotten some pretty steep discounts, and that's also true of Ryzen 7000 models to a certain degree. We tested our 245K, which Intel sent us, in our new LGA1851 test bench. Powered by ASRock Z890 Lightning, the 245K was paired with an RTX 4090, 32GB of CL36 DDR5 RAM, clocked at 6000MHz, and Corsair's 420mm H70i liquid cooler. We're using the default motherboard settings, which means the 245K used the standard Intel power profile and nothing fancy. However, we did disable application optimization, which would normally be enabled by default assuming you've installed the dynamic tuning technology drivers required for the feature to work. We also tested the 2A5K in the same test bench under the same conditions. To compare against the 245K, we have performance data on the 14600K and the 14900K, which we tested in our LGA1700 test bench. This system uses the Z790 Tai Chi Lite from ASRock and 32GB of DDR5 memory set to 5600MHz and CL46 timings. Everything else is the same as on the LGA1851 test bench. Finally, we also tested the Ryzen 7 9700X, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, and the Ryzen 9 9900X on our AM5 test bench, which uses the B650E IRG Strix and the same memory as configured in the LGA1700 test bench. This is mostly a gaming performance review, but we also have a few non-gaming benchmarks to show as well. Anyways, let's get to the performance data and see if the 245K can hold its own. In Cinebench 2024, we can get a feel for the 245K's general CPU horsepower. In the multi-threaded portion of the benchmark, the 245K is about 17% faster than the 14600K and nearly 27% faster than the 9700X. In the single-threaded test, the 245K's lead over the 14600K shrinks to 8%, and the 9700X ends up being 2% faster. In Geekbench 6's multi-threaded benchmark, the 245K is 10% faster than the 9700X and 12% faster than the 14600K. The margins aren't as good as they were in the bench, but it's still a decent result. The 245K musters a single-threaded score 6% higher than the 14600K, but the 9700X ends up nearly at the top of the chart with a 14% performance lead. PC Mark 10 is sensitive to both CPU and GPU performance, and since we have a 4090 in the test bench, the margins here have greater meaning than their small sizes suggest. Here, the 245K actually loses to the 14600K by a hair, and the 9700X ends up being 4% faster. Not a great omen for the 245K as we get into gaming performance. 
Our first gaming benchmark is Total War 3 Kingdoms at 1080p, and the 245K finished in second to last place. It did beat out the 9900X, which is a much more expensive CPU, but it lost to the 9700X and even the 14600K, the CPU was supposed to replace. This is unfortunately not a one-off instance. The margins shrink when we switch the 1440p with the Ultra preset, but the 245K has a noticeably lower 99th percentile frame rate compared to every other CPU. In case you're wondering what that means, it means that the frames on the 245K weren't as consistent as on other CPUs, which can make the experience feel more laggy or stuttery. The 245K surpassed every AMD CPU in Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p, but it showed somewhat lower performance than the 14600K. The 245K doesn't lose much performance when the settings are cranked up, but the margins have changed quite a bit. The 245K gains ground on the 14600K, but the 7800X 3D comes out ahead into third place. But at least the 9700X is still in last place. The 245K does super well in Civilization 6, beating even the 14900K as well as the 14600K and 9700X. Though, given that this is a turn-based game, I'm not entirely sure of the value of having over 300 frames per second. With more intense settings, the 245K is still ahead of the 9700X and 14600K, while the 14900K jumps to second place. But when it comes to how quickly it can get through each turn, the 245K doesn't impress too much. It's about a second faster than the 14600K, but slower than every AMD CPU, including the 9700X. In City Skylines 2, the 245K doesn't have a much higher average frame rate over the 14600K, but it does manage a significantly better 99th percentile frame rate. The 9700X was bested in both the average and the 99th percentile. The average frame rates are all about the same when the settings are maxed out, but the 245K still has hints of better 99th percentile performance compared to the 14600K and the 9700X. This is a pretty dismal result for the 245K, which in Dota 2 at 1080p ended up in dead last, and by quite a severe margin. The 7800X 3D is nearly twice as fast, and although it's gotten more expensive lately, anyone who grabbed the CPU for when it was like $300 definitely has nothing to regret. It gets a little better for the 245K at 1440p, but not by much. The 14600K is still ahead. The 245K pulls off decently better performance than the 14600K, but it's much slower than the 9700X, which managed a first place win. In Dirt 5 at 1440p with the ultra high preset, we see pretty much every CPU ends up performing about the same, mostly because the test bench is GPU bottlenecked. Although the 285K did remarkably well in Minecraft, the 245K really misses the mark somehow and ends up behind the 14600K and 9700X, though we are looking at frame rates in the 600s and 700s here, they're quite high. Unfortunately, more intense settings do no favor for the 245K, which is at least a bit ahead of the 14600K in the 99th percentile frame rate. In Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, all of the Intel CPUs are about in the same ballpark, and due to run-to-run -run performance variants, the 245K is actually a tad faster than the 285K. In reality, they perform pretty much the same. Meanwhile, the 9700X and 7800X 3D rack up a massive frame rate. With maximum settings enabled, pretty much every CPU performs the same way, though the 245K is a smidge faster than the 14600K in the 99th percentile. In Rainbow Six Siege, the 245K achieves dead last performance yet again, with an average frame rate a decent amount lower than seen on the 14600K, though its 99th percentile performance is better. However, all of the AMD CPUs had much better performance, and it can matter in esports titles like this one. On the bright side, at 1080p with the Ultra preset, we see the 245K match the 14600K in the average and achieve a much better result in the 99th percentile, but the 9700X is still significantly faster with a result that was really only beaten by the 7800X 3D. Shadow of the Tomb Raider continues the trend of the 245K matching the 14600K's average frame rate but having a better 99th percentile, while the 9700X is better on both fronts. It's about the same at 1440p with higher graphic settings, albeit the 9700X is now about on par with the 245K. Our final title is The Witcher 3, and the 245K manages a decent level of performance a little ahead of the 14600K and the 9700X. At 1440p with the RT Ultra preset, the 245K's average frame rate is about as good as the 14600K's and the 9700X's, but it also sports a modestly higher 99th percentile frame rate at the same time. I really think the data speaks for itself. The 245K lost to or tied with the 14600K in most of the games we tested, and it only beat its predecessor in, I believe, three or four games. I was able to give the 285K a little bit of credit for not beating the 14900K, similar to how the 245K did 
and beat the 14600K. That was because the 2 a 5 k has pretty good overall gaming performance and looks to be the fastest mainstream CPU for content creation. But I can't be that forgiving to the 245K. It has way more competition in terms of price and performance, and its content creation aptitude just isn't that impressive. We didn't test it, but other reviews show the 14700K being much faster than the 245K in basically everything, and it's just a little bit more expensive. The 14600K, meanwhile, is basically just a cheaper version of the 245K. The 245K does have some advantages over older Intel CPUs, but I don't think they're worth it. Power consumption is one of these advantages. The 245K's 159 watt TDP is much lower than the 253 watt TDP given to the 14700K. That means for the 14700K, you need a better cooler and a motherboard with more power stages. But still, the performance uplift is quite substantial, and LGA 1700 motherboards, if you don't already own one, will be much more affordable than newer LGA 1851 motherboards. If you're concerned about power consumption, the 14600K consumes about the same amount as the 245K. The 245K also has that MPU for AI stuff, but I'm skeptical of its usefulness on regular desktops because modern GPUs can pack tens or even hundreds of tops, while that MPU just has 13. Finally, the 245K and other Core Ultra 200 series CPUs are the only ones that can slot into LGA1851 socket motherboards, but there are signs that the LGA1851 socket won't get the next generation of CPUs after Arrow Lake. If LGA1851 only supports Arrow Lake, then that would be a pretty crummy deal compared to getting a 14600K and an LGA1700 motherboard for much less. If the newer socket doesn't really have an upgrade path, then you might as well go with the older one. I haven't even mentioned AMD CPUs, in particular the Ryzen 7 9700X. Sure, the 9700X doesn't have an MPU and it lags behind in content creation, but in gaming it's a whole different story. There's a few games where the 245K beats the 9700X, but the rest of the time the 9700X just thrashes the 245K. The 9700X also has the benefit of being on AMD's AM5 socket, which is almost certainly going to get another generation of Ryzen CPUs. For the mid-range, having an upgrade path is incredibly important. There are just too many alternatives to the 245K, whether it's a 14th gen model from the last generation, the 9700X, or another Ryzen 9000 CPU. For that reason, I don't recommend anyone go out of their way to buy a 245K. If Intel somehow improves the performance of Air Lake CPUs or cuts prices, I might change my mind, but in the here and now, the 245K is just not a good CPU. We'll take a look at power efficiency and application optimization on the 245K in the near future, but I don't think it'll change our opinion of this chip very much. Anyways, that's what we think about the 245K. If you liked our review, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you want to support us financially, we have a Patreon you could donate to, a link is in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.